Okay, Math 31, here we are. We're going to graph some rational functions. So you see these six traits here, domain, x-intercept, y-intercept, VAs, and behavior and range. Those are the traits that will be on your midterm. So they're not going to change from now until your midterm. We're going to need to be able to find all of these based on this equation. Now, I won't take technology away from you, but I would really encourage you to try and graph these without technology first and then use technology to help you once you get stuck or to check your work because I will want to see the algebra behind it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is label my axes and you should always start with domain. I always want to start with domain. So let's figure this out. I'm going to leave x minus 2 here. I need to figure out when my denominator is 0 and we've actually factored this already a couple of times in this section. So I've got my denominator zeroing out at two places, right? I can see it zeroes out at three, and I can see it zeroes out at negative two. And with that being the case, I'm gonna write my domain up. I'm gonna go from negative infinity to negative two, that's the smaller number, and then negative two to three, and then three to infinity. All right, so anytime you wanna find your domain, set your denominator equal to zero. And it's always going to be a good idea to factor both your numerator and denominator if you can. I could factor my numerator, my, I'm sorry, my denominator. My numerator was already a linear factor. All right, x-intercepts. Let's go to this, this trait table and discuss how we get x-intercepts if we're dealing with rational functions. So if you have a rational function, you want to let x, excuse me, you want to let y equal 0 to find your x-intercept. That's always the case, and solve for x. But this means let your numerator be 0, pending that your x value doesn't also make the denominator 0. Again, I'm looking for what are the x values that zero out only my numerator. All right, so let's take a look at that numerator. All right, I see my numerator here as x minus 2. So if I want to figure out, I'll do a little work on the side here, when does x minus 2 equal 0? Well, that would be when x is equal to 2. But I need to write this up as an ordered pair, so I need 2 comma 0. Now let me go over to my graph and put that trait on my graph. I'm going to go 10 and 10 here like I usually do. Okay. Now my y-intercept. We know we find a y-intercept by letting x equal 0. So let's do a little bit of work here. If I want f of 0, that would be 0 minus 2 over 0 squared minus 0 minus 6. That's negative 2 over negative 6, so that would be positive 1 third. So let's go put that ordered pair on my graph. Okay, so we're just picking these traits off one at a time. All right, do I have a vertical asymptote? Let's go back to our traits. All right, if I'm on the column that says rational functions and I want to look at vertical asymptotes, is there an x value that zeroes out? Oops, you can't see it, excuse me. Is there an x value that zeroes out only my denominator? Well, let's take a look. Anything that's in the denominator is a potential candidate. All right, we've got 3 and negative 2, right? 3 and negative 2, those are my two numbers. 3 does not zero out my numerator. Negative 2 doesn't zero out my numerator. So that means that 3 and negative 2 only zero out your denominator. So I have two vertical asymptotes. I have one at x equaling negative 2, and I have one at x equaling 3, and I'm going to go write those in here. Okay, so let's see what we have. We have negative 2. And I'm making these vertical asymptotes dotted lines because they're not actually part of my graph, they're boundaries. All right, and you cannot cross vertical asymptotes. Okay, now let's take a look at end behavior. All right, I'm going to scooch this up, see if I can get a good chunk of it in my view. There we go. 
All right, I want end behavior. Now, when it comes to end behavior, for rational functions, right, end behavior, I'm either gonna have arrows, a horizontal asymptote, or a slant asymptote. And we have all of those cases that we need to work through. All right, so let me just, actually, I need to move this up just a little bit more so I can work on this. So I'll put it out of view, but I'll bring it back down. Okay, so for my end behavior, I have to think about my function. So my original function was x minus two over x squared minus x minus six. So the degree in my numerator is one and the degree in my denominator is two. And whenever the degree in your numerator was less than the degree in your denominator, that was what we were calling a case one. So I would have a horizontal asymptote for my end behavior at y equaling zero. All right, so now let me go write that trait onto my graph as well. And I'm gonna scooch this back down so we can see it. All right, so let's go write in the line y equaling zero. y equaling zero is the x-axis. Again, I'm gonna make it dotted because it's not actually part of my graph. Okay, so let me show you what's happening here. When it comes to horizontal asymptotes, my graph's either headed this way towards the horizontal asymptote or this way. I don't know which one. And on this side, it's either coming this way or this way. I don't know which one. For vertical asymptotes, my graph's either here or here, and here or here, 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 here. I'm not gonna use all of these arrows, but that's, that's my options. So if I look at this, if I wanna connect the dots, I might have this on the lower half, or I should say on the left half of my graph, or I might have this, I'm not sure which one, okay? I can actually figure this one out, I'll come back to that. Over on the right half, it'll either be this version or this version, really not sure which one. Now I said I can figure out this middle section because I have some lines or some ordered pairs. Right? Because this is headed this way, because I can feel this heading down as I go from my y-intercept to my x-intercept, this has got to come this way. Right? So I know I'm going to be heading down on this one. And then on the, by the same rationale, this has to have been coming from up top. So on this vertical asymptote, my y-values must have been heading to positive infinity. Oops, let me make that a little nicer. Okay, so that one, the middle section there has to look like that because I've got to connect these two dots. Here I'm kind of just left out in the dark. And you're not totally left out in the dark. What you could do is you could pick a test point. Let's pick any x value over here. Let's see, this is one, two, three. Let's pick four just to get an idea. If I plug four into this function, let's see what the y value is going to be. It's either going to be above the x-axis or below it. So let's find out. If I plugged four in, four minus two would be two. 4 minus 3 would be 1, and 4 plus 2 would be 6, so 2 over 6 would be 1 third. So I have the point here for 1 third. And I don't need to be super precise, but what that's telling me is that I'm on the top part of this, this function, or the, the graph is on the top half of the axes here. So I can erase that one, and I can fill in the top part here. And let's say you're like, I'm not into whatever you just did. I don't want to pick ordered pairs. Well, this is where it might be good to actually head over to your calculator. So if I go to my y equals and I clear all that out, let's type in our function. So we're going to go x minus 2 divided by x squared minus x minus 6. Let me hit zoom 6. Okay. So I can see there's the right half of my function. That's what I have graphed. Here's the middle, right? And I have that graphed as well. Yeah. And then in terms of the left piece of this graph, I know I'm going to be on the bottom here because I can see it. Now, I also could have plugged in ordered pairs to figure it out, but we can use technology to do it. 
And if I want to get a couple of ordered pairs to help me graph something, let's go to my table and let me head back and graph some of these just to use them as guides. All right, so what do we have? Negative five, so one, two, three, four, five, negative 0.3. And then negative four is right around here, okay. So it looks something like this. And there's a pretty good sketch of my graph, all right? So with that, once I get the graph done, then I'm gonna read the range. So if I look at the range, I see my down arrows. And actually, if I look at this middle piece, I can see I go from all the way down to all the way up, right? I know that I have this horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. And it's true that at the ends of the x-axis, my function doesn't cross the horizontal asymptote. When we talk about end behavior, we mean the ends of the x-axis. I'm not concerned about the middle of my graph or the middle of the x-axis. So you can see that in the middle of the x-axis, it crosses right over that horizontal asymptote. And that's fine. Like I said, you can't cross verticals, but we can cross horizontals. So just from this middle portion here, I get all real numbers for my range. So let me scooch this up and then let's fill out the range. So my range in this problem is negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, so we've got all of our traits we laid them out, I see them on my graph. My graph is properly labeled and scaled. So this is a solid, this is a solid problem. We did great work. All right, so with that, let's head on over to the next one and try and graph our next rational function. I'll see you in a bit, bye.